challenges facing our state. What do you think are the most pressing challenges currently facing our state? Well, it's not always obvious to people what the major challenge is because the press is filled with issues of the economy and the budget. Um, but underlying and kind of over laying all of that uh, long term is what I view as our most challenging issue and that is the aging of our population. It's been referred to as the age wave or the silver tsunami but the aging of our population uh, in all western developed countries but nationally and in our state has huge implications for our budget, for how we uh, run our communities, for how our families are structured and who we're caring for over time, and, and just how we live our lives in our communities. So this is something that's unprecedented in all of world history that will have so many people over the age of 65, over the age of 85. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Why is it that that um, becomes the, the most pressing challenge? Well, it has a couple of really immediate implications for um, what happens in our state uh, in terms of public policy. First of all, as the population ages overall, less revenues come to the state. Ah. Uh, older age groups um, have less sales tax and income tax comes from them. So just with the aging of our population having nothing to do with the, the current Great Recession we've just experienced or down turns in the economy, we're going to see a flattening of the revenues coming into our state. Interesting. Can I ask you for our viewers, why would less revenues be coming from them? Is it because of retirement? Maybe they have most things they need? People in their retirement have less income they okay. spend, to spend. Sure. And then they also spend less, they, and they spend differently. Okay. And so we know from our budget forecast and from revenue forecast that this will occur. Okay. And at the same time, and this is the real kicker about yeah. this issue, at the same time, demand for government services goes up. So these two trends, both driven by the aging of our population, work in the opposite directions. On the one hand, you have revenues flattening off as income and sales tax from the aging groups decline. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you have that same group of people demanding more government services from government are eligible under current federal and state law for more benefits and services I see. unless we change things. And so aside from the current downturn we'd experienced, mm -hmm. even if that hadn't existed, we would still have a budgetary challenge to tackle and that we would have to make some significant changes to address just to deal with that conflict between the rise in demand for services and the declining revenues uh, because of the aging of our population. How do you propose to address that challenge? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a um, couple different aspects of this. People sometimes ask, you know, do we have a, or, or state is, you know, is it a spending problem or a revenue problem? As you've just heard me indicate, um, it's both. You know, we have a revenue problem in that over time with the aging of the population, revenue is going to start to flatten out. Right. Um, we also have, you know, more, more intense revenue problems when we have recessions or, mm -hmm. you know, downturns in the economy on a cyclical basis. But we have a spending problem in that the portion of, the, and not necessarily in the way that some people speak of that, and right. that government's grown too big and out of control. That's why it's so nice to hear you clarify for our viewers some yes. of these things from an inside perspective, and thank you. Right. Well, um, you know, we always have to worry about, you know, the role of government and appropriate activities of government and whether it is too big in some ways. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what's happened this decade in Minnesota, uh, no aspect of government, state government, has grown in this last decade in any real terms, budgetarily, except the health and human service area. I see. And when I arrived in 2006, it was growing at 14 to 15 percent a year, under Democrats, under Republicans. Wow. Um, and now, under these many cuts we've experienced in rolling back, every part of the budget in the state level, environmental protection, um, uh, all areas, are, all the agencies have been cut significantly. Mm -hmm. The only area that's growing is health and human services. Now that's 6%. So we've slowed the growth, more okay. than cut the growth in half. So why is it growing? We're not adding new programs. We're not, in fact, we're cutting programs. We're making it harder to be eligible for programs. We're cutting the benefits associated programs. Mm -hmm. What's growing is the number of people who are eligible for the programs under law, more elderly, more disabled, more disabled children. So sheer under, numbers are going up. Sheer numbers, and then just the underlying cost of health care. Okay. The underlying cost of health care. Um, you know, the technology involved, what's available to us today. Sure. Um, so as we 
our aging and we're keeping ourselves alive longer, you know, all the various things available to us to do that have become much more expensive and driven by the technology and the drugs and medications that are available as well. Well, thank you. Uh, what would you do in a, in a nutshell, I know it's a pretty big nutshell, to solve the budget shortfall that we are currently facing? Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, it has a long-term and shorter-term um, aspect to it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the long term, we need some real restructuring of some of our policies to have a great, more sustainable path, both in terms of those spending things I've talked about, uh, ways to do those things more cheaply and more efficiently, okay. um, but also um, to have a comprehensive, you know, kind of tax reform to look at a more stable path for our revenues going forward. Okay. Short term which is the, the one that people are focused on right now. Yes. We have this governor's race with many different ideas floating around from the three candidates in that mm -hmm. race, uh, often seeming contra contradictory uh, policy proposals uh, uh, being thrown around. But in fact, we need kind of a little bit of all of what they're raising in some way. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little element of truth um, in, embedded in each of the candidates' comments. And what I mean by that is, first of all, so my, my approach to the budget has a number of different angles to it. First of all, I do believe that we need to improve the business climate in Minnesota. And that, to me, does mean we need to have some crow growth uh, tax reforms in the business area that will make Minnesota more competitive nationally, globally, and to make it a better business environment for small businesses. Those things cost money, though, because that mm -hmm. usually involves cutting taxes or tax credits, which comes up on the spending side of our budget in the sense that less revenue coming or less revenue coming in, and so we can't afford to do all that immediately. Obviously, we need to phase that in over time, but use have that discussion as part of a larger agreement about how we have stable revenues. So the next piece of that will be that we will have to do you know, serious redesign and restructuring some things that we do, looking for efficiencies, looking for new ways of doing things. We'll have to do some more cutting. It's mm -hmm. inevitable in the short term, given the magnitude of our challenges. And we'll have to we'll discuss revenues of some kind. Okay. In order to do this work in the short term in a way that doesn't undermine our core institutions and our communities, nursing homes, you know, long-term care, schools, our courts, Mm -hmm. and our basic safety net. Okay. So we really need a comprehensive approach that has balance. Uh, it sounds like a mouthful and mm -hmm. many, many complexities. And I think you've helped shed a lot of light into the complexities. Mm -hmm. I think people tend to think that it's uh, sometimes simple, and it really isn't, is it? Mm -hmm. There's really nothing simple about the challenges we're facing. Definitely. Like I said, unprecedented in history. Right. Uh, it's not about you know Republicans or Democrats. Right. It's not about small government versus large government or you know uh, good versus bad. It's just really tough challenges for us as a culture and as a society and a nation and a state to address. Thank you. What have you done so far as a lawmaker to eliminate waste and inefficiencies in state government and to help solve the current budget deficit? I heard you speak that that is very important mm -hmm. and a critical piece. And what has your work been in that area? Yeah. Well, you, know, you often hear politicians and legislators talk about the need to do you know, reforms and cuts. Um, both are hard to do. There's obviously groups of people um, who are affected by all those things. Definitely. There's oftentimes interest groups of various kinds resisting change yeah. in, any, in any area of the state budget as it's evolved over time. And in terms of, of making cuts and reforms, um, I've, I've become come to be known as someone in the Health and Human Services area, where I serve on the Finance and Policy Committee, okay. is someone to go to to really dig deep into a particular area and find savings. Okay. So in 2009, for example, uh, the governor's approach to many areas of the Health and Human Services budget, particularly adults that were on public programs, was just to cut entire benefits and services. Yes, many of us recall that. Yes. And one of those areas, for example, was he zeroed out all dental programs, all dental services for all adults on public programs in Minnesota. Wow. And this included, at least this is what he proposed, mm -hmm. this included the blind, aged, and disabled who had social security designation under federal law okay. would no longer have any dental benefits of any kind. Even how did, though he, we how were, did he propose those people would get their dental care? He did not propose oh, a okay. way for them to get dental care. Just to clarify. Yes. And so 
here's an example. You know, it's a, a, a program, tens of millions of dollars every year is spent on this program. Okay. It's a key part of basic medical care in most legislators and public health professionals' view. Okay. Uh, the dental feeds right over into the medical. So here are people that were responsible for their medical care. Okay. So there was already synergies, yeah. is what that you're we saying. That were required by okay. law to yes. cover their medical care, in fact, under okay. federal law. Okay. Um, but we were saying no longer we would do dental care. So this was unreasonable and inappropriate in our view. We knew we had to sa find savings throughout the budget mm -hmm. as we went forward. So this is one area in which we really did do zero budget, you know, zero cost budgeting, mm -hmm. with zero base budgeting. We um, basically said started from scratch. Okay. I brought all the stakeholders involved in this area together, dental professors, uh, d dental providers, um, uh, insurers, uh, the agency, safety net coalition, people uh, receiving these benefits, and discussed what is the medically necessary benefit for the adult benefit in Minnesota. What would it look like? Wow. How could we build that? And we built it from scratch. Wow. And at the end of that process, people knew that, you know, Zeros doesn't work. Mm -hmm. We need to provide this, but we need to do it at lower costs. Right. We cut the cost of the program in half. Oh, wow. So we cut the cost of the program in half. It was passed into law in 2009. So every year into the future, about $25 million a year of savings because of the work we did on Congra that piece. Congratulations on that piece of work, and I'm assuming that, that you're constantly looking, you know, based on what yeah. you've said, for those very types of mm -hmm. savings. Uh, without impacting the needs right. of the community and the needs of the state, is that correct? Exactly.